welcome to our webinar about composing micro frontends. My name is Itai. I do all the sort of things at Bit, helping various teams, big and small, in adopting Bit, building micro frontends, building with components, and so on. Why are we here? Why are we here to speaking about micro frontends? First of all, on the participation list, I see there's a lot of type of stakeholders. Some of you are developers, some of you are team leader, architects, and I see even some high level executives. I know that if we open the mic and let all of the crowd here have a discussion micro frontends, we'll hear a lot of opinions, we'll get a lot of feedbacks and, and have a very interesting discussion on the type of problems that teams are facing and looking into micro frontends in order to solve them. So I'll try and share from our experience, from what we have seen working with Fortune 500, small startups, and in general inside our community on the topic of composing micro frontends and composing in the front end. Often the discussion around NFTs is almost like a cargo bolt moving into uh, two specific items. The ability or the want, I wouldn't call it the need at that point, to run multiple frameworks in the same browser. And secondly, the ability to have runtime composition and have ability for one team to just almost push updates to all other teams on all other projects. Before that, I actually want to go and try talking about the different problems that different stakeholders actually see. First of all, I guess most of we are here are developers. We want just to have a freedom to use different tools, update our stack, and whenever there is a new project, maybe there is an amazing tool we want to adopt, we want to do it. And micro frontends, the uh, or micro frontends can be a way to achieve that. Team leads or architects often look at what they do right now and can foresee sometimes different scale for the business, for the architecture, for the enterprise, and wanted to try and future proof themselves, their architecture, their products. And usually executive, you know, VPs and so on uh, would like to have sort of consistency across a wider organization. So if you have hundreds of developers trying to, you know, build applications, you still want all experience to be consistent. You don't want to have, you know, spending resources or spending R&D time on problems that were already solved by other teams. To try and, and sum it all up, what I want to try and argue is what we want, our problem statement for trying to look into micro frontends is we actually want to have autonomous teams collaborating in efficient and scalable way on one or many applications within the organization. And, and, and it touches everything, right? It, it touches our ability to modernize our stack or build new products with new tools, uh, ability to scale our headcount, right? If we want to set up a new team and we want a way for that team to build our product, integrate that into our product, ability to have a sort of consistency, having teams that are focused in specific domain, being able to build their experiences and share them throughout the organization. That's a key item here. To those problems, right? It, it's all about team autonomy. We want an ability to release independently without breaking anyone, uh, right? We want to move in production. We want to be able to distribute things from a larger repository or a larger monolith to a smaller one, simplify our code base. You want, we want an independent way to change. We want to be able to you know, provide collaboration, to adopt changes by our peers, not to be broken by incoming changes. We also want a way to control and standardize this type of flow. Honestly, I think this is also part of a larger trend, trend that we see that people in teams largely grew tired of working in and around a monolithic application. We see that also from the backend perspective with microservices and our service functions. Uh, we want to slice our applications, split our code base, and we want to work in a more distributed way. We want to allow fast iterations on some parts of the product. We want to have maybe slower iterations on other parts. We want to be able to isolate functionality and have the potential of reusing that functionality between teams, between projects, between applications. At the end of the day, we also want to build a good developer experience around this entire thing. With that in mind, I'd like to jump into a quick demo. In that demo, I actually want to show how we went ahead and looked into all of those organizational problems and solved them. So what I want to start with is our basic open source documentation site. For bit. So as you see, this website, while it may seem very simple, behind the scenes, there are multiple teams collaborating and integrating with micro frontends in this application. So first of all, the community site itself 
provides you know, home page and some functionality layering and few other capabilities. But the documentation and other parts of the application are essentially not a part of this. Those are services, those are micro frontends provided by other teams. So if you look at our documentation, this is a standalone application, a standalone micro frontend that a separate team within it maintains, builds content, and ships as a micro frontend. Not only this team, but in a similar way, the um, marketing team has built a blog application that is also hosted within the boundaries of the dev. They are able to ship their content out, make sure that it's fully available for the community to read and review. And above all that, we also want to make sure that we have a simple, straightforward discoverability experience that can find not only content in the docs, but also content in the blog, CLI reference, and others. So in this case, for example, I can quickly jump and learn about stuff in our CLI reference. And sorry, and also and also jump and read a blog post. And everything is with a single coherent user experience throughout this entire application, while all of those micro frontends are essentially not aware of each other. Honestly, even the search experience itself is its own micro frontend that is then applied onto this application. So this is how we kind of build this uh, integrated way. And I hope that content consumers of this application, you didn't really have an idea that behind the scenes, there are three and a half-ish teams behind this website, all collaborating and delivering together. Right now, how this is working behind the scenes. So to do that, let, let's dive a little bit deeper into how we think about organizing teams, organizing micro frontends, shipping them, delivering them, and so on. So let's start with Team Autonomy. We have several teams at Pit. As I mentioned earlier, there are several teams taking part in our community website. We provision a bit scope for each team. This scope is that team's area to put all of their micro frontends uh, for others to use. It provides them with complete autonomy as only that team has permissions to create content in that scope. It provides ability for other teams to have discoverability, to read documentation for you know, the available micro frontends. And it gives this sort of domain boundaries between teams, right? All of the NFTs and components of the web community are in one spot. All of the things that deal with our docs and documentation portal are in a specific domain. And same goes for our blog, right? There's, so it gives these domain boundaries. Now, we also tend to think about each scope almost like a microservice where the different NFTs are the APIs of that microservice. So with that in mind, it's very much like this sort of uh, service-oriented way of building our organization. And the key for that is that this also abstracts away a lot of the complexity and abstracts away from the consumers how those things got built. Because behind the scenes, there is no hard link between a Git repository and BitScope. This means that if a team grows very large, they can use multiple repositories and manage content in a single scope. They can decide to put all of their NFTs in a single repository, push them to a single scope. And all of this is abstracted away, allowing teams to be completely autonomous in how they build, how they ship, and how they uh, manage their own code base. Okay, in those scopes, right, there are obviously components. So for example, this uh, blog, Right, this is the blog micro frontend. This is a bit component. Bit is not opinionated on how big or how small a component is and what's inside of it, how it's implemented. As we create components, we can decide bit components only. We can decide to just put whatever amount of code with a you know, large feature or a small capability and just manage them as an NFT. Now, the key thing here to understand is that each of those micro frontends has its own build pipeline, its own release changes and management, which again is completely decoupled from the rest. So this means that one component can be built with React, Next.js, another tooling, another component can have Angular or even Vue, or maybe it's just gonna be written in web components. Each team gets to decide their own implementation and their own toolset. As I said earlier, one component can be React, another can be Angular, 
and connecting them together or providing ways to connect them together, you can check out our documentation to learn a little bit more about that. If there is a need to have a runtime compositions or ability to support single spa, model federation, ES modules, UMD bundles, ship to a CDN to provide runtime functionalities, those things can be added as plugins on top of your components. So this can also be a decision made by a specific team to solve a specific problem. So for example, here, if I want to have uh, model federation support for a component, I can just create, add a small plugin to any component, any deep component, and just add the required configuration for my component to be bundled and have a uh, model federation target build and the, and the deploy step to deploy it to a CDN, to a bucket, to anywhere or in Kubernetes and have this available for others to consume in uh, runtime. But I would like to dive a little bit deeper into our specific implementation because in all honesty, each implementation of my performance has a different set of problems to solve. So in our implementation, we decided long ago to standardize on a specific tech stack, specifically React, but this can be any other tech stack. Uh, the reason for that is we see that if there are multiple frameworks running in the same browser, there's going to be a performance impact. Moreover, we aimed at the beginning to build uh, microphone that are highly connected. To do that, to manage this type of state, having a single runtime makes it that much easier. So all components are essentially available for a single runtime. It's usually something we also recommend. However, there are specific cases out there that some organization have that do require to have multi framework support from day zero. For example, if we are trying to modernize a legacy application, if we have, if our organization has done a merger with another company and we need to integrate two tools and we don't have the time to refactor and standardize everything, then there are cases where it makes sense. And with Bit, because you actually have the ability to build and manage each component independent build pipeline, you actually get to make this decision on a per component basis. As some of you probably know, uh, by default, BIT supports build-time composition for components for package management. And this is uh, also something that we chose to implement by default for ourselves as well. The reason for that is that we get more safety out of it. You get type safety. At the end of the day, we also build a single artifact and we run our test and ship it. So we get no surprises in production by other team members. However, in larger teams, in larger organizations, sometimes the need for runtime integration is critical. And in those cases, having the ability to almost skip the line and have ability to push all the way to production for other host application makes perfect sense. And for those things, as I mentioned earlier, adding a plugin for model federation for single spot or UMD bundle is as simple as a small snippet inside your application and just have this capability added to a component. In a sense, this also means that a single component can generate multiple artifacts and support multiple composition types. This means that if you have one consumer that want to use mod federation, they can do that. Another user want to use ESM modules directly, then they can do that if you build your component correctly and allow them with those things because each bit component is essentially a code container that the build pipeline for it generates multiple artifacts. And those artifacts can be of bundles or packages and others. As you see here, right, we have all sorts of different target builds that we can then use and generate and push either to CDN or through a uh, registry to install in build time. Now, something that I do also want to point out while we are here, because this is something that we tackle often from our end. As we scale the amount of micro frontends, we see the need of figuring out additional workflows. It's not only about discoverability, right? Because on one hand, you also want to have all of your components, all of the NFTs uh, that the organization created, regardless of where they are, uh, to be available to find, right? And read the documentation of each component, understand how to embed it and just go ahead and use it. But on the other hand, you also want to have a way to allow developers to rapidly create more of those NFTs, more of those components. You want to make this a, like almost like a, a daily thing, right? If needed, 
just create something as a micro front end and deliver something as an asset to the organization, make your work that much more scalable. And then the other piece is about code sharing. Often, uh, something that we see happening a lot when organizations adapt for NFTs, they put aside the functionality of or the problem of code sharing between those NFTs. This can result in bloat of bundle sizes, duplicated functionalities, and others, which means that not dealing with that we can have a potential performance degradation on our end users and in bit because we can look into a component and a micro front end as almost the same thing generating shareable code or generating micro front end is relatively cheap and basically the same developer experience all in all now i actually have a quick second demo as you see here Everything in bit, not only our web application, our documentation, the community website is micro front and even features within bit itself are built as micro front end. So here, for example, I actually took the component compare micro front end that some of my team uh, members built and actually embedded here, actually in my speaker slides. My speaker slides are also a type of MFE. I can then embed them in different places in our organization and deploy them. But in this case, as you see, Right, I can navigate, I can see you know, the complete functionality of components compare NFT right in the context of my speaker slide application. And this is only a possibility because this is something that we just do it like it's part of our DNA. And it's that simple for me as almost like a non-developer to take somebody else's work, embed it into my work and be able to use this as an example here. How to get started? It's fairly simple. Just install Bit, initialize Bit either in a new repository or in your existing project. Create a scope for a specific domain, and then just create a Bit component in your repository. Bit component is not opinionated on the amount of code. So if you have an existing NFE or you want to build something new, just port over the implementation into Bit. Make sure it's well configured, well connected and then just version and export your component. That component is now ready to be embedded in any target application. Now, this is the most basic fundamental flow. And you can repeat that, create more specific domains, more scopes, and start managing a slew of micro contents, even from a single project, from a single repository. Now, if you do find yourself needing a bit component to support runtime composition, or you do need to have support for multiple frameworks, then those solutions are documented in our documentation portal. And again, do try to make sense out of it. Don't try and drive all the way and think about, I want to have only run integration. I want to have only these type of capabilities. Try and really think about the main problem we're trying to solve. Try and think about how can we make teams deliver software more autonomously and with, with better developer experience, try to solve for the specific problems as they come and don't try to over engineer a solution for problems that you either don't have at the moment or you imagine having in the future. Thank you all so very much for taking place here and participating. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to take some of this conversation privately later on and have a great day.